this video I want to talk about some safety awareness and some safety guides with oxyacetylene welding and brazing and anytime you're using acetylene this all applies. So the oxyacetylene kits combine the oxygen and the acetylene and they're usually combined on a cart or a single holder. Okay, every time you use oxy oxyacetylene equipment, if certain safety guidelines aren't followed, it's the same as handling live explosives ready to go off. Okay, safety is very important. You can have you can really kill somebody or kill yourself if these gases explode. Remember, oxygen is not air. Okay? Oxygen, in normal air, there's about 21% oxygen. Oxygen is found naturally in the atmosphere. But it's also produced in, industrially by distilling, wa distilling air below its freezing point. Pure oxygen does not burn or explode. Oxygen is what we consider an accelerant. It causes everything it comes in contact with to burn hotter and faster. Air overall has a density of 1.0. Oxygen is heavier than air, which means if an oxygen bottle is leaking, the gas is going to settle in low areas before diffusing back into the atmosphere. 30% oxygen in the atmosphere will cause things to burn or explode eight times faster. Oxygen is required to support any burning process. It's therefore combined with a fuel gas such as acetylene to produce the desired operating flame. As I said, oxygen itself is not flammable. However, the presence of oxygen will drastically increase the speed and force at which burning takes place. Oxygen can take, turn a small spark into a roaring flame or an explosion. Oil and grease in the presence of oxygen became, becomes highly flammable and explosive. Never allow oxygen to contact oil or grease or any other flammable substances. Never use oxygen in pneumatic tools. The oil and the gas pressure friction can cause a fire explosion. Don't use oxygen in oil preheating burners. These burners are not set to burn with 21% oxygen to air ratio. Never use oxygen to start an internal combustion engine. Gasoline is flammable enough with 21% oxygen available. Don't use oxygen to blow out pi pipelines. Leftover flammable or combustible vapors may still be present enough to cause an explosion. Don't use oxygen to dust off clothing or work area. The oxygen will remain present in the cloth fibers, causing them to become more flammable. Don't use oxygen to create pressure or for ventilation. Remember, oxygen is not air. Due to the high pressure under which oxygen is bottled, cylinders must always be handled with great care. The potentially violent reaction of oil, grease, or all other contaminants in the presence of oxygen cannot be overstressed. Serious injuries may result if oxygen is used as a substitute for compressed air. Okay, oxygen bottles, they're pretty, st they're pretty sturdy. They're usually of steel construction. Okay, the standard size is 244 cubic foot. That's the K size tank. It's shipped in... 2,000 to 2,600 PSI. They're hollow in construction, and an electric arc can cause an oxygen bottle to explode. The carbon in the steel will atomize into a fuel. The orifice of the top of the bottle is the diameter of the lead in the pencil. If the bottle top is damaged, and the, the bottle can become a projectile, causing injury or property damage. Never allow the oxygen tank to go empty. This may allow acetylene to travel into the oxygen lines or the bottle. And always keep it free from oil or grease. Again, oil and grease in the presence of oxygen becomes highly flammable. Acetylene is the other gas that we use in the oxyacetylene setup. Acetylene is a compound of hydrogen and carbon, C2H2, and it's a member of the hydro hydrocarbon gases. The explosive range is 3 to 93%. It only needs 10% of oxygen to ignite. It's produced when calcium carbide is mixed with water. Acetylene is what we consider an unstable gas. It will violently decompose when a pure state above 15 psi. 
It has a burning temperature of anywhere from 4,600 to 5,700 degrees Fahrenheit when burned with oxygen. It will self-ignite at 763 to 824 degrees. This means that if acetylene reaches 30 PSI in a free state, it can explode by itself without a spark or flame being present. Remember, acetylene is an extremely dangerous gas. The acetylene bottles are usually steel construction. They're filled with a porous material to allow the, acetyl the acetone to dissolve the acetylene, which makes it stable. Porous filler is 8 to 10 percent. Acetone is 42 percent. Acetylene gas is 36 percent. Okay, there's a reserve volume of about 10 to 12 percent. We never allow a tank to go empty. The filler which completely occupies the steel shell is about 90 to 92 percent composed of millions of interconnected pores. Again, acetone is about 42 percent of the internal volume throughout the filler. Acetylene gas is only about 36 percent of the content of the tank. Okay, and the mixed with the acetone only occupies about 78 percent of the volume. And then there's still a reserved volume at about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 to 12 percent. Since acetone and acetylene gas will expand as the temperature rises, a safety reserve must be present even at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. There has to be room for the gas to expand so the pressure doesn't go up. We got to be very careful about oxygen back pressuring into the bottle. Okay, it always has to be stored upright, and it, the whole purpose is, by storing upright, you prevent the oxygen and the acetylene from separating. We should not store acetylene tanks below freezing. The acetylene may come out instead of, the acetone could come out instead of the acetylene and can clog the regulators. Most regulators, okay, have two gauges on them. You have a low pressure gauge, and then you have a high pressure gauge. The low pressure gauge shows the delivery into the hose or the torch. The high pressure gauge indicates the pressure from the tank. Okay, oxygen are right-handed threads. Acetylene is left-handed threads. Be very careful to keep things free of oil and grease. There's a pressure regulating screw that you want to turn clockwise to allow, allow the gas to flow and increase the, regulate, the pressures. Counterclockwise reduces or stops the flow of gas. Oxygen and fuel pressure regulators are attached to the cylinders, okay, to reduce high cylinder or supply pressures to be suitable low working conditions for cutting and welding applications. The internal working parts of the regulators are precision units. Only qualified technicians should clean or repair a regulator. Okay, that pressure adjusting screw, okay, controls the delivery pressure to the gas in the hose. Always keep the regulators free of oil, grease, and other flammable substances. Never use oil or grease in the regulator, cylinder, or manifold connection. Do not change the inlet connection on a regulator as an attempt to use the regulator for different gas services. Never stand in front of or behind a regulator when opening the cylinder valve. Backfires are possible and they occur when the torch tip when the torch flame burns into the torch tip and is extinguished with a loud pop. They can occur either because the torch tip touched the work or because of insufficient gas pressures. They are generally harmless. However, flashbacks are more serious when the flame does not extinguish but burns back sometimes beyond the mixing chamber, through the hoses, and even into a tank regulator supply. The common inside diameter of the fuel hose is a quarter inch. If you calculate the volume of 100 feet of hose with the quarter inch diameter inside, means this means oxygen. if oxygen enters the fuel gas hose or fuel gas enters the oxygen hose, a mixed gas ex explosion with the force potential of 20 sticks of dynamite could occur. That's just based on the volume of what's inside the hose. The check valves are valves that are that are designed to only allow the gas to flow in one direction. It's not intended to act as a fire stop, okay, but again, 
flow valve gas keeps the valve open okay but if the if the valve pressure decreases the valve closes to prevent the backflow of the gas we don't ever want the gas flowing backwards into the cylinder Flashback arresters are also designed to prevent a flashback from reaching the upstream equipment. They offer additional safety and often include the reverse flow check valves into a single unit. Oxygen hoses are always green. Acetylene hoses are red. Be careful not to use other such hoses, okay, such as airlines, LP gas, etc. The hoses used in oxyacetylene are neoprene over a braided inner section. Be careful around sharp objects. They can be cut very easily. They are constructed of flame retardant materials, but will burn if there's a flashback or, expose, or are exposed to sustained heat. Hoses are graded. Make sure you use the right hose for the right gas. Keep welding hoses clear of any uh, falling metal, slag, or sparks. Never allow hoses to become coated with oil, grease, or dirt. Okay, you want to be able to see any damaged areas. Examine the hoses before using them. If cuts, burns, or worn out areas are found, replace the hose. Completely replace the welding hose if it contains multiple splices or when cracks or severe, or severe wear is noticed. The torch handle contains a torch head, a barrel, and a control body Y. Okay, and if it's just an acetylene hose, it's going to have one feed. Okay, torch cutting attachments are available. They must always be two O-rings on the cone end. The presence or damage of either of these O-rings allows the premixing allows premixing and lease of oxygen and fuel gases. This can lead to flashbacks within the torch handle. The biggest question is what size cutting tip do I need? The type of torch you are using and the thickness of the material being cut determine the proper cutting tip for an oxyacetylene flame cutting. Always make sure your equipment is rated for the size tip you have selected. A tip with way too much capacity for the equipment can starve or choke the tip. This causes overheating of the lead and flashback may result. A damaged seating surface on either the tip or head can create a dangerous condition resulting in fire or flashback. This may damage the cutting attachment. If the seating surface of a tip becomes damaged, do not use it. Discard the damaged tip. If the head requires repair, take the torch to a qualified repair technician. Always refer to the manufacturer's supplied cutting chart for the cutting tips you're using. Remember, if you do not use the proper acetylene to oxygen ratio, you may cause an accident. At the very least, you'll waste gas, which causes dollars. Okay, never starve or choke a multi-flame heating nozzle. This can cause overheating of the head and a flashback may result. Should a flashback occur, flame disappears and a hissing sound is heard. The flame is burning inside the nozzle. Immediately turn off the oxygen valve on the torch nozzle, then turn off the fuel valve. We want to cut the flow of oxygen as fast as possible. Allow a nozzle to cool before using. If a flashback reoccurs, have this apparatus checked by a qualified technician before using it again. Some other general safety tips. Okay, never allow oxygen to contact fuel, grease, or other substances. Never mix brands. Purge the lines before and after use. Always wear protective clothing. Use proper eye oxygen. If a flashback occurs, immediately turn off the O2, then the acetylene, and allow the unit to cool. Always work in a well-ventilated area. Always light the acetylene first. Oxygen cylinders must be opened all the way. Use an approved striker. Never use matches or cigarette lighters. Use the proper regulator for each specific gas. Only qualified technicians should repair the regulator. Keep regulators free of oil, grease, and other flammable substances. So there's a lot of safety involved with oxyacetylene. Again, a lot of it's common sense, but it basically boils down to use the approved tools, keep it clean, and don't attempt to use oxygen in places where you shouldn't.